everyone uh, welcome to get your energy back weekend with me uh, i hope you guys are doing well i hope your day is going on well as well and i hope you are enjoying your weekend uh, thank you so much for being here with me uh, yes i was going live straight with my friend noel uh, let me invite him here <laughs> Hi, Noel. Hey. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> hey, one second, man. One second. All right. Just, I'll change this with camera around, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, joining in. Um, thank you so much for being here uh, with us. Um, Gonzal Lapapi Lion, Lan, Lion, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Um, it's Get Your Energy Back live with my very good friend Noel. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, honestly, it's it's been a long time coming. I, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. It's been a long time coming. We've been planning to do this live session together for a while. And um, I'm just so happy that we are finally able to do it together uh, today. And, uh, you know, our hearts has just been in sync that, look, we, we need to do something. Um, just share uh, our story, talk about the stuff that we do. And uh, knowing fully well that it's definitely going to help somebody out there. Um, that's just yeah. what this is about. And that's what this evening is about. Um, I know each and every one of you have your goals, your personal goals, your professional goals that um, you are seeking to crush and um, to achieve. And that's why I decided to bring Noel here. Let's do that and help you get that uh, mindset, that mental energy, emotional energy, and physical energy, you know, to take your performance to a whole new level. So I'll just get right into it. Um, for those of you that do not know, um, Noel is an ultra marathon runner. And um, honestly, it's such, it's such a great joy and privilege to be with him. I think I'll just quickly read your profile so that people can get to know you a little bit. Um, okay. uh, hold on one second. So I, I have here, um, Noel is um, 35 I, from Ireland. Uh, he's a father of one daughter. Um, Northern Ireland Youth International Soccer Player scored against Wales, England, and Slovenia. Um, All Star Way record holder, 1,000 kilometers in 28 days, cycled to Poland across six countries in 26 days. Ireland, France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, and Poland. 40 marathons in 40 days self-supported look no when i saw that as in i almost fainted when, when i saw that i know i know you're an ultra ultra marathon runner but 40 yeah. marathons in 40 days as in i've run only one marathon and i know what it did to my body and you have run 40 it's it's incredible now 20 ultra marathons 20 days 50 miles per day that's eight kilometers self-supported cycled ireland with a man suffering from mental illness he later committed suicide hiked ireland 1000 miles in 40 days plus more since 2015 until present currently running survivor camps and endurance retreats in ireland uh, noel here is a motivational coach a fisherman carpenter and musician in his spare time so 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 awesome to have you here with us uh, noel and and i i tell you i will say it again well when i saw your profile i was totally blown away i was like how did you do this man you you really need to let us know and i i think let's just start like that um just um give us a little bit of background um how actually did you get into running and then not just running now running in mar running marathons running ultra marathons just um share a little bit of that with us uh well coyote um 
it was back in 2015. I had sort of been on a, a long journey in my early 20s. I sort of lost my way a wee bit. And, and, and then I, I said to myself that I had to do something, you know, that would blow my mind a wee bit. And that's why I set off and decided to hike the Ulster Way, which was 1,000 kilometres in 2015. Um, and once I'd done that, literally just setting off with a backpack, and walking a thousand kilometers, not knowing, you know, just living each day, going day by day. It literally changed my life in a way. It changed my outlook on the world. It changed yeah. how I felt about what I needed. And, you know, the things that I thought that I needed every day, I realized when I was living out of a backpack that yeah. life can become very, very simple. And um, so basically that was the first thing I'd done. And, and once I've done, I've done that, I said to myself, well, I'll, I'll do a cycle next, and um, a cycle to Poland again, going across seven countries, not really knowing anything, just living in the moment, honestly, really living in the moment, and um, yeah. and that just carried on, that progressed, and each time then just tried to step it up a level and try to improve a wee bit, and everything that I had done, so I walked, then I'd done a cycle, then I'd done another walk, so I knew I'd never run a marathon before. When I ran 40 marathons in 40 days, I literally, the furthest I'd ever run was about 10 miles, but there was something in my mindset that told me that with the walking and the cycling that I had built up a wee bit of a, a tank for it. And I knew it was going to be a struggle. I knew it was going to be hard, but um, it ended up to be the most, one of the most amazing things ever, you know, setting off, running the first day and, um, and camping out of them 40 nights, man, I camped for uh, 18 nights uh, because, you know, I, as I say, I never made a plan further than day one. I just said, wake up in the morning, let's see how we go. Yeah. And when I was running 40 marathons in 40 days, I had a 62-year-old man on a bicycle behind me with a camera, wow. with all our camping gear. It, was, it turned out to be just like a, a really... A really amazing adventure and something that I'll never ever forget. So that then was in 2017, and every year I've sort of progressed and tried to do a wee, something a wee bit more difficult or a wee bit more taxing on the body, building up the endurance, building up the mental and physical endurance, and mm. and also just throwing yourself into real uncomfortable situations just to see how you can manage and. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's took me to the last journey I ended up doing. I ran 50 mile, 52 mile plus every single day for 20 wow. days. Wow. And it was crazy. I set off on my own. I do all this stuff on my own. People go do themselves, oh, how can I go and walk a thousand kilometers or a thousand mile? How am I going to afford it? How am I going to get the my accommodation, my food, my equipment, yeah. whatever yeah. it may be? So in my mind, I start with nothing. Absolutely mm -hmm. nothing, just an idea and a vision of what I'm looking to achieve. Mm -hmm. And basically then, when it's funny, Coyote, whenever you create an idea, mm. doors open up around you that you would never even have opened before because, Absolutely. you know, you'd have been just sitting doing your normal stuff. So Absolutely. Absolutely. basically whenever I'm going to set off on one of these journeys, it's um, our challenges, whatever you want to call it. It's like a journey for me. It's also a challenge, and mm. um, but it's also a project. So I'll go to a company who might be able to avail of what I'm doing. So if I'm going to be on the road for 40 days, I'm going to be speaking to – the newspapers, to local media, on social media, that yeah. has a value. It may not have a value to everybody, but some people it does have a value to. So basically in the beginning, it was always difficult going into companies and saying, you know, you know yourself, man, ringing up somebody and going, this is my idea. Yeah. Or, Do you want to get on board? And at the beginning, you don't fully, it's like that sort of imposter syndrome. You don't fully believe in it. You know, you're yeah. saying, how am That's I doing it, this, yeah. whatever. But then as time goes on and each journey goes on and you build up a bit of a portfolio for yourself, mm. now it becomes more easy and natural. There's doors that are open and there's people waiting. And, and when you ask somebody now, nine times out of ten, they say yes. And, uh, and that's yeah. how I create the whole project. So I'll find out. I'll, I'll sort of work with a charity so that whatever I'm doing will raise money for somebody and help somebody when I get home. Absolutely. But also then 
I go into a company and say, hey, listen, I've got a T-shirt, I've got a bike, I've got a whatever it is, I can put your brand on it, I can mm -hmm. represent it in a positive, motivational way. And yeah. it's amazing, it's amazing, man, how, uh, yeah. how many people want to jump on that. And that's yeah. what's been fantastic for me and a real eye-opener. So, yeah, it sounds mad when you, when you think back from 2015 to now, everything that you went through and that you've done, but it's very simple. It's mm -hmm. one day at a time. One step at a time, you know, one mile at a time, whatever it is, and that's the that's the way I approach it, man. Hmm. Well, <laughs> well, that that's that's so awesome, Noel. As in, thank thank you so much for that. Uh, one thing I got from that is that you, you start with nothing, uh, you start with nothing. You you just have your idea, and one thing about that is that doors you never imagined begin to open up just because you have that idea and you decided to 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 take this a step as in for me that's that's just so i i connected with that so much and you know um it's it's so it, it, anyone you know can can tell how much um this journey has meant to you as in like really how life changing it has been yeah. you know many of the times i i just really want to hold people and shake them up to let them know how life changing it was for me you know to run the marathon last year that my yeah. first ever marathon i that oh, yeah. i ran last really? year here in nigeria as in for me it was so so life changing and i'm like why are more people not doing this and you know especially <laughs> <laughs> and, you know as, especially um over here in in my country nigeria it's not so popular really you know even when you you go around and you know i'm trying to tell somebody yeah i ran a marathon they're like um sorry what did you say were you saying something as in you know they literally like are sleeping off when you are telling them that you did something like that and you know both both and so for some of the other people who who try to even give you a listening ear to say okay oh okay you run a marathon you know the very next question they ask me after did you win most of the time that's the question they ask did you win that for them that's just the most important thing did you did you get a cash reward did you get something um, very tangible and that for all the effort when i now say okay no i didn't win they're like then why why on earth will you run a marathon you are not a sportsman as in why why would you run a marathon and yeah. you know i'm just like for me it's it's the very same reason that i left the my corporate job some years ago and the reason why i left that particular job to do what i do right now which is writing and training is that I, I i i said that look if you live an ordinary life all you will have are ordinary stories and yeah. for me it's about that thing of deciding to challenge yourself to do something that you have never done before to challenge yourself to get out of the comfort zone for, for me that's what it's all about and to imagine that just that one decision because that's why it was for me it was like you can't be, keep saying you are a high performer if you are not doing what other high performers are doing. And, you know, mm. I kept reading books. I remember one particular book that I read was Baron Kansi's book, um, mm. A Life in Parts. And, you know, that's where he was sharing the story, you know, as a struggling actor, how there was this day he, he witnessed the New York City Marathon. And there was this old lady who crossed the finish line and he was like, what? He was a young man then. And that if this old lady could do this, there was his own excuse. You know, he was at a point in his life where he was feeling so depressed, so downcast. He was going all about looking for acting jobs and he couldn't get, nobody was, was giving him a chance. But it was so interesting that when he had that switch and he said the next year he was going to run the New York City Marathon, it's so interesting how his life changed from there. And for me, it was, it's also such a very life-changing experience for me. It, sure. it, it just brings me to my, the second question, which I want to ask you, Noel, is that what would you say is your own why? As in why you do what you do? What, what would you say is the purpose behind what you do? Uh, my why would be probably to to make myself feel good and to to build up something within me that 
You know, when you, we all know how to consciously walk or run. We can all do it with our eyes closed. We all know how to do that. But when you do it for a long, long time or hours, hours upon hours or miles upon miles, you get to a point where your body starts to say, I don't want to take this next step. I don't want to do this next mile. And then when you beat that voice down in your head and you say to yourself, you know what? No, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to see what happens here. The element of bliss that comes from that, at the end of that day or at the end of that journey, whatever it may be, or at the end of that mile even, yeah. it could be as simple as that. It's like it gives you a feeling that you would never, ever have had before. But probably for me, I lost me one of my parents. I lost my mother when I was about 19, 20. And my daughter, she's 14 now. She was just born. She was literally six months old. Wow. And I had moved away from my family in my hometown in Ireland. I had went to uh, the city basically to go to university. But when I had done that, a lot of my ch life changed. Everything that I was doing in high performance in a football level yeah. sort of went out the window. And I made a lot of sort of silly juvenile choices whenever I was in my early 20s. And... Um, and it got to a stage where I couldn't keep making them choices or else it was going to take me to a very, very dark place. And so basically, once I'd done that first adventure or that first challenge, it just, it literally blew my mind. It literally filled me with so much pride. It filled me with, because I was out walking around the country, meeting people on a daily basis, brand new people that you've never met before. Yeah. I, I, every hello, every hello, as you know, man, is an opportunity waiting to happen. And I know that sounds very cliche, but mm. if you're sitting in your own little bubble and you're driving about in your life or you're working in your office or you're, and then you're driving home again and then you go home and you sit in front of the TV and mm. your life's passing you by. And exactly. I got this stage where I was like, nah. So I stopped watching TV. I've never had a TV since 2015. I don't waste my time watching news. I, I'm mm. very, very particular about what I let in here. Like wow. that's the main reason, following people like yourselves and, and contacting people like yourself and, mm. and watching what you're doing and others are doing. It inspires you. It makes you go, you know, even if you're having a wee lazy day, I'll may watch you maybe out running about Nigeria with a dress on and go, yeah. you know what, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a run there, you know. So awesome. if, if you keep putting the right things into your into your mind and into your body, then um, the world's your oyster, you know, you have every single possibility of whatever you want. So uh, my way, man, to keep it in, that would be my way, probably from a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. Mm. say maybe emotional emotional mental pain just from dealing with loss and dealing from change in circumstance then I mm. took that pain and started to go through it physically mm. you know every step every mile and um, so now yeah that's that's probably a big motivator for me is uh, just being in that painful place back then mm. and now if certain events happen the way they happened back then now it's like water off a duck's back it's like psh, you know, it it wouldn't affect me that way. You know. Yeah. Well, oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, th th thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my mentor there, um, Sevari, say that's a great why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th thank you, thank you so much. Tr just transforming your pain. Um, <clears throat> the the you know still talking about the marathon. I uh, the. The marathon I ran uh, took place in February last year, that's 2020. And I remember that um, I made the decision to run the, that particular marathon in 2019. And so I remember I made the decision sometime in May and all that. So I, I planned ahead. I said, okay, the marathon is going to be February 2020. So six months at least before then, I need to start yeah. preparing for the marathon. So I said, okay, come August 1st, 2019 i'm going to start training for the marathon now you must bear in mind that before this time i had not run in like forever i had not yeah. run anywhere not around my neighborhood around my house or even done any long distance thing <laughs> anyway so you know every as august 1st kept 
drawing closer as you know i just kept having anxiety attacks i was like sure. how is this thing going to be would i look weird would i look ridiculous you know i'll just step out of my house and i'll be running on the road some you know something you've never done before and i was just like everything in me was just wanting to you know give up on the whole idea you know push it forward you know the the interestingly what ha- what happened was that august 1st 2019 and if you check your calendar you will see that august 1st 2019 happened to be a thursday and i don't know okay. if this has happened to you i'm sure it has happened to you or and some other people how you know you want to start something new and you are trying to justify starting something new on the very first day of the week like a monday so i remember when august first came and it was a thursday i was like no carry day. you don't start something new something you have never done before on the first day you leave it till a monday of the following week and you know i remember something just came up in my heart and you know that was that's um carrie lamb's quote and you know she said a year from today you a year from now you wish you be gone today and for me i just knew that if i didn't step out of the house that day i was yeah. never going to do it and so yeah. for me that's just settled it and i just stepped out of the house that day and i hit the road running and it's so interesting that from then on until the marathon d day and it was a dream come true for me now yeah. the, the the question i want to ask is that it, it's procrastination really you know how how do you deal with procrastination or oh, first of all let's even talk about how see how big of a deal do you think procrastination is you know when it comes to people achieving their goals either personally and professionally and how do you deal with it Progra- uh, procrastination is probably one of the biggest uh flaws that we all have you know because we come up with an idea in our head and then we go oh should i really do that actually what will my friends think what will my family think you know what don't care what anybody thinks don't care don't give a shit what anybody thinks if you have a vision and a goal and you set that goal up there make sure it happens yes there's going to be days where you're going to be more productive than other days but as long as every day you're taking a tiny tiny step towards your goal or it could be as simple as making a phone call it could be and listen i'm speaking from experience because i've i've let many days go past where i've said to myself you know early on i've said to myself should i make this call should i what if they say no what if they don't like it but yeah. you soon realize that when you make the call and then the person goes yes you go that could have been sorted two yeah. weeks ago you know, it could have been done two weeks ago. So probably a big, uh, a big bit of advice to remove procrastination is to write shit down. Write yeah. it down. Write, get it out of your head and down onto a bit of paper. And once it's down in that bit of paper, then, you know, you have your list. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. And put it somewhere where you're looking at it every single day. If it's in your diary, your journal, if it's hanging on your front door, on your fridge, whatever. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just understand procrastination is the biggest dream killer mm. in the world. You know, yeah. it really is. And um, procrastination is probably something that is born from fear. Just Absolutely. born from fear. That's what we, when I think of procrastination at all, it always relate to back to a fear of can I do this? A fear of will they say yes or no? And mm. you know what? Sometimes in life, you just have to say, screw it. I'm Brilliant. going for yeah. it. I'm going to do it. So as Nike says, just do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just do it. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Cl- closely linked to cr- uh, procrastination. And, you know, it's so interesting you touched on that. Uh, procrastination, you know, coming out as a result of fear. Um, closely linked to that is this thing called distraction. You know, I, 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 put a, I put up a quote a little while back on my page. And I said, um, you are not lazy, you are, you are simply distracted. And, yeah. you know, it's so interesting that quite a number of people really connected, you know, to that quote. And we're like, look, right. you are talking about me as in I, I'm really struggling here when, you know, when it comes to distraction. And, you know, I, I think that's what a lot of people need to hear, you know, because sometimes many people just think, ah, I'm just so lazy. I don't have that energy. But one thing I'm realizing more and more is that one of the major things or two major things that take our energy, fear, which is procrastination that you have talked about, and distraction. 
And you know, it's so interesting that you talked about the fact that you've not had a TV since 2015. And you don't watch the news and all that. Uh, My wife is here right now on this live session with us. And she can testify that I think it's getting to almost like two years now that I've I've really taken myself like off watching the news before I was a news addict. I I will make sure I scroll through all the news channels on cable TV. (laughs) scroll to them read all the news bars of everything that is going on because I, I was like look i want to be informed i want to be informed until i started seeing how it was affecting me negatively Absolutely. piling up all those things you know was what i just yeah. saw that this thing is not helping me not everything that is going on in the world concerns me and if I exactly. keep giving my attention to those things, where am I going to have the attention and the energy to give to these things that really matter to me, that will move my life to a whole new level? And, you know, really? it was so beautiful that you just even touched on that, you know, before <laughs> I was going to talk about it. But, you know, I, I don't know if you can just take a little bit deep dive, you know, into that of distraction. Absolutely. Well, say even the distraction and relevance to the news and stuff for me here in, in our country, I maybe wouldn't know, but uh, like throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s and early 2000s, there was a there was a war here. There was mm. people killing each other, blown. And the town that I'm from, I'm from a small town called Oma. And on, uh, I think it was August 15th or in the uh, middle of August, on uh, just before... The year 2000 and what happened was there was a car planted in the middle of the town and it blew up and killed 28 people children women uh and that was one of the last catastrophes that ever happened in our con well one of the last major catastrophes but for me growing up as a child all my elders were watching the news and you were because you were a byproduct of that you were sitting there and then you were coming distracted of oh this is the way my world is this is the way my country is and then whenever i got out and discovered it for myself and i switched that off what was being sort of rammed down my throat honestly man it changed it changed my life in the fact of it made me see the world in a more balanced place and especially this country here and the people around me but also once i made a conscious decision in 2015 to not watch tv and not be distracted i remember sitting in a house i had i got a new house in around 2015 2016 and it was a, a beautiful house but there was no electricity and over here in because it was uh, it had been left land empty for so long it took so long to get it uh, switched back on again okay so i went from december Jan- november december january february with no electricity okay as a conscious choice I, I, I was glad to wait and I didn't care if it was the winter. I didn't care if it no lights. I didn't care if it no TV. I says, you know what? I'm going to sit here with myself mm. and I'm going to see what comes of this. Wow. And I remember looking over one day, I was out working in the garden for the first, say, maybe four or five weeks, working mm. in the garden, doing something that I would never have done before as an early, in my early 20s. But then mm. because I, I had moved to this area, I'd started to engage in nature and being self-sustainable and that sort of thing. But I remember sitting there and it was a cold winter's evening and the fire was going and the snow was going outside. And um, I remember seeing a guitar sitting there. Yeah. And I was like, I'd never played music. I loved music. I loved music my whole life, listening to other people's music. So then I just picked it up. And from that moment on, anytime I felt like watching TV or what, like getting involved in that distraction world, yeah, is I would have picked something up, whether it's a book, whether it's a guitar, whether you know, or just listening to something that I wanted to hear that was going to be productive and help me. Mm-hmm. And that's basically the way I've tried to carry on. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times like probably this month with the Euros and the football and stuff being on. Exactly. Yeah. I've watched the ma- I've watched the matches, a couple of them with my daughter, and sometimes I just listen to it. And even when I'm listening to it, I'm saying to myself, 
I remember how much energy I used to give to this football malarkey, <laughs> like supporting it. And they, like, if your team won, you felt great. If your team lost, yeah. now <laughs> I just, I don't have it. It's gone. Yeah. It's like, it's completely gone. I've really no interest in it. And yeah. I say to a good friend of mine, he's like a mentor of mine over here. They call him the chief. And um, I said to him, you know, like, how do you support? And he was like, I support myself. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. And this man, great footballer, top man. And I always remember that sticking in my mind. He was like, I don't support anybody. I support myself. You know? yeah. So as far as distractions concerned, man, keep your distractions to a minimum. There's many of them out there. We have them every single day. Absolutely. But keep them to a minimum. And when you... When you remove them distractions that are bringing you nowhere and bringing you down a hole, I guarantee when you take that away, it'll be filled with something better. And um, hopefully, if you have the right mindset, it will be. Otherwise, you'll sit there going, "Oh, I wish, I wish I could be watching Netflix. I wish I could be, you know, doing this, doing that." But yeah, man, distraction, as you say, is a, a big, lead, a big lead up to procrastination and to failure. Yeah, you know, to yep. failure as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, thank, you, thank you so much, Noah, for, 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 for that, honestly. Uh, and you, you, you just touched on something. So um, I think we, we, we can merge them up together. That um, especially in your profile, you mentioned that you, um, I'm trying to get that, sorry, that you cycle Ireland with a man suffering from mental illness. And um, yeah. Yeah, he later um, committed suicide, and yeah, and I I know that you you've already touched about that you know, um, coming out from your dark place, transforming your pain, um, up to the particular level that um you are today, um, I I I don't know if you you want to talk about that experience, you know, um, cycling with that man, and <clears throat> what what um other piece of advice and encouragement would you probably give to somebody who you know is probably in a dark place right now that um, he's not finding that mental and emotional energy you know to do those things go after their goals that they want to go after i would say every day above the ground is a good day you know every day above the ground is a good day man and it might not seem it sometimes but I remember when we done that cycle, I had literally re returned home from running the 40 marathons in 40 days. But this guy I had worked with about six months previously for two weeks. He was our cameraman when we were going to do an adventure around the UK. And um, when you met this guy, he was from Cornwall, six foot three, big blonde, looked like a surfer dude. You know, when he walked into a room, he captivated everybody, really nice, charismatic, intelligent. But after sort of a couple of weeks working with him, you could see there was a few cracks there that uh, maybe this sort of flamboyancy and this, you know, confidence was covering up something else. And um, it happened when I returned home, I got an email basically from his family saying, listen, I know you know Matthew, he knows you've been away running around uh, the country can you basically, he's in a suicide prevention center, can you do something with him? So I sent him an email and says, listen, I just ran this route 40 marathons in 40 days. So now I know the route without looking at a map. I could run a thousand miles around the whole country without ever having to look at a map or anything. So I says to him, listen, come over and we'll do this together and we'll cycle. Now he came over and he stayed with my family um, for a couple of nights. Then we set off. Now, the bike I was using, I used the same bike that the get the old man cycled with behind me, the 62-year-old, so he had the with the camping gear. I used the exact same bike. And um, this guy got, like, literally a 10,000-pound bike sent over to my house, all the finest gear, uh, if you name it, the best of stuff. And um, we set off. And again, I... Uh, Man, I had no idea what was going to happen after day one, but I knew that we would be well looked after after everything that had happened to me before and the connections that I had built up. So we traveled around and we went into, I'll give you a bit of a context. We, we set off every day. We got our food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner given to us free of charge in every single town and village. 
we had our accommodation given to us either by a friend or by somebody seeing what we were doing on social media and saying come in here but a lot of the time it was me basically going into a place and saying listen this man's in a terrible spot can you help him out can you help the two of us out this is what we're doing this is why we're doing it for and honestly man it blew me away the kindness and generosity of just complete strangers and we got to a point where we were about 500 mile in or four or five hundred mile in, maybe about a week in, um, I met this guy that I had met before in a, it would be classed as a spiritual place in this country, uh, in a way, like people believe back in the day that miracles happened here and all this here, Kipper, okay? Yeah. Well, we sat down and we were, having, uh, lo- we were having dinner before we went to this man's house in a restaurant. And I'm talking and I'm telling you, man, what's going on and Matthew's with me, the guy's called Matthew and... He's talking about his story and stuff. But next minute, this this bunch of Americans are sitting like on the far end of the restaurant. One of them comes over and he says, oh, my God, guys, what you're doing is amazing. He was like, um, where's he goes, where are you going to next? And we says, we're going to Galway. And he goes, oh, we've come here from Boston. He says, there's 50, there was supposed to be 52 of us come over on a bus, but there's only 50 of us have arrived because somebody got sick. You can come and stay in the hotel. If you meet us in Galway, we'll give you the hotel. You can stay there for three or four nights. You can do whatever you want. And I was going, oh, my word, absolutely unbelievable. So all these small, tiny miracles were happening along the way. And when we returned home, to keep it short for you, man, when we returned home, um, (coughs) he basically said to me, uh, Noel, I have to go back to my life. I've lost everything. I've lost my wife. I've lost my house. I've lost my job. And he says, I still, I don't want to be here. And I was like, I said, man, after everything that you've been through, I says, gratitude is, you know, this is what you sort of really need to accept here is a bit of gratitude and, yeah. and realize that if you do something like this, your life will change. But I remember him leaving my house. The, we came home and a day or two later, he had to fly home to his, where he was going. I wanted him to stay longer, but it was just not possible. And um, he had to go back to where he was going. He said he was going to take his Land Rover out into the mountains and he was going to try and live his life as best as he could. I think he lasted four months. And then I got a message from a friend saying, basically, uh, Matthew's no longer here with us anymore. And um, it was it was very, very hard to accept because I remember saying to him before he left home, I was like, listen, Matthew, I know you're in a dark place and you're in a hard place, I says, but um, there's only one thing braver maybe than doing what you're thinking of doing. And that is that when you're in that dark, like to, to take your own life, it may be seen as cowardly, but it's also for somebody to do it is like you have to have something within you to make yourself do that either it's a lot of pain and, and that pain's led you to the bravery of ending your life so i says to him just uh there's only one thing that's going to be braver than doing what you were thinking of doing these last sort of year and a half whatever and that's to turn your life around that's the only thing that i would say to you that you can do and um he was just a heartbroken man man and he was uh, and i know i know sometimes like you can look at it and dwell on it and feel sorry and all that and and you know we all come here and we all die and whatever but uh for me it was like it gave me a different outlook on life and on people's mentality and on people you know how far people can go and how far low people can go because everybody's probably been in a point you know, and where they say, I've had enough of this, or, you know, I want to do more, or I'm not where I want to be, and that frustration can lead you to a very, very dark place. So probably for him, loneliness was the biggest the biggest problem, you know, not having that connection of positive people around you. And um, even though for weeks after, I tried to reach out to him and touch base with him, but it was just a case of, like, literally when we were cycling along the road, he was in tears. He was, like, he was opening his heart up to me. We were cycling along the road, and he was literally in tears. And I remember just, it was such a an emotional journey, like, really, really powerful experience. But it's just a shame that he wasn't able to pull through. But uh, there's, there's only so much you can do, man. There's only so much you can do to take somebody to a certain place, as they say. You can take a horse, you can take a donkey to water, but you can't turn it into a horse, you know. And um, 
that's the way I look at it. But that was back in 2017, 2018. So hopefully he's looking down on everybody and uh, we just move on. We draw a line in the sand and uh, hopefully nothing like that ever comes into my environment again, for sure. Because since then, to be truthful, I've dealt with a lot of people who've had the same scenarios. And if not worse, through addiction or through you know loss of a loved one or whatever, and whenever you get them out into nature and you take them on that adventure and you make them have a wee bit of struggle and a wee bit of sort of living in the moment, they come back so energized, so full of life and ready to just, I want to stop whatever it is I'm doing. I'm going to really channel everything that I've learned on this experience. Mm-hmm. And so that was the one bad scenario, maybe out of, you know, 50 or 60, which have all ended in good. But it was a, it was a big landmark in my life anyway. Mm. Well. <clears throat> uh, that, that's that's so powerful and you know so so talking about the other you know people who have come back and have feel energized um you, you, you say their biggest takeaway is um you know helping them live in the moment <clears throat> helping them channel their energies uh, uh positively and all that what what, what other um, takeaways would you say that they they have had you know to be able to find back their energy nature wow. nature heals nature heals every everything everything wow. in my in my eyes when you put yourself out into nature and you're living around a campfire or you're camping in the woods or nature just does something to people that um mm. I've never seen happen in another way, you know, wow. because when you take people out to nature, people are afraid. In the beginning, they're afraid of that mountain or they're afraid of crossing that river or they're afraid of sleeping in that forest. But see, when they overcome that, wow. then you see them the next morning. They're like, wow. the very next morning, they're automatically, they're like a battery. You can feel the energy coming wow. off them. It's like a vibe. Yeah. And um, so that would, be the, that would be the only thing. And man, all I can try to do when I'm there is guide them as far as I know the way, I know how to make fire, I know how to live in nature and mm-hmm. to listen. And God gave me two ears and one mouth for a reason. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, I know I, I like to do this sometimes, <laughs> but other times I like to just listen. Listen, wow, wow. O- awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Th- thank you so much. Thank you so much, Noel. I, I'm sure somebody has, has definitely gotten so, 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 so great value, so much great value from, from that, honestly. And I know definitely as they expose themselves more to nature, you know, it's all about just that, taking a walk, um, going on a run, exposing yourself, and, you know, you will definitely find that energy back, um, you know, yeah. to get back to whatever it is that you are doing, and, you know, just take your performance yeah. uh, to a whole new level. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and um, I think just finally, um, Noel, you've been such a great blessing to us. Uh, just one final question. Um, how, how do you take care of um, your fiscal energy? And um, what do you recommend so that people, you know, you've, you've, honestly, this has just blown me away, you know, how you've addressed the mental and emotional energy. Um, well, um, talking about physical energy, come on, Noel, you push yourself literally to the limits as, a, as a, you do, man. As in, for me, it's so inspiring, honestly, it's so inspiring. I'm just like, what have you been doing? As in, you have not been doing anything. As in, so literally, how how do you recover, take care of yourself physically, and then what would you uh, recommend to other people, you know, to to get back that physical energy, to take care of themselves, take care of their bodies physically, to help them achieve their goals? The most important thing for me, man, is walking. Lots and lots of walking. My in a week, in a week, I would probably walk over fifty miles, you know, through work. Through, and that's maybe five to seven mile every day, guaranteed. But then there's other times where I'm maybe going to do something. I'm not a big, I'm not a big promoter of vehicles, and I'm uh, like I would prefer to be going about in a horse and cart, you know, that sort of way. <laughs> I'm very old fashioned. I'm like a caveman. Yeah. But um, I just find walking, and mm-hmm. whether it's by yourself or the, that famous saying, "Man, walk before you can run." 
you know, walk before you can run. And that's how I sort of approached it because, as, as I said, uh, the first thing I done was walk the 1,000 kilometers, and that gave me a, a, something within me then to, to advance and push on. But getting into the ocean, getting out into nature, plenty of water, plenty of good vegetables, food. And, wow. and when I am running big distances, I often find I don't eat a lot of red meat. Now, I do like meat. But when, when I find that I have to I've run a marathon and I have to get up and run a marathon again the next day, fish and vegetables and light food and it gives you a wee bit of, whereas you know if you eat a big, and we can all do it, we could eat a horse sometimes, yeah. and uh, you get up the next day, you feel bloated, you feel slow and lethargic. Absolutely. and Absolutely. So being very conscious of what's going in here and what's going in here, mm. getting your rest. Yeah. reading things that inspire you, speaking to people who inspire you, and just wow. getting yourself out that front door. That would be my advice to anybody. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Noel. That's uh, that's so beautiful. So, so awesome. Um, watch watch what you are eating. Uh, move a lot. Uh, watch what you are putting in here. Move a lot more. Watch what you are feeding your mind, as in... I think that's that's awesome, and you definitely get that much needed energy to get um, take your performance to a whole new level. Hearing it straight from a high performer himself, the <laughs> ultra marathon runner, uh, Noel. Thank you, thank you so much, honestly, Noel. You've been you've been such a great blessing to me this evening, and I'm just to, to to so many other people that have listened to you, listened to your story. Thank you, thank you so 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 much. Um, thank you. Uh, I I know that you you'll be here with us, Noel. I don't know if there are just few minutes. I don't know if there's anyone who has any particular question that they want to ask you. Uh, any one of you guys want to ask Noel any particular question? Just few minutes uh, before he goes. Um, and they can uh, they can DM us as well. Yes. They have any questions, they can DM us too, and uh, I'll be more Absolutely. than willing to yeah. answer yeah. anything. And I'm sure I'm sure you're a good guy, man, and you'll yeah. do the exact same. So I hope I hope I get to chat to you again, man, because I've really enjoyed this, and uh, it's lovely right. to speak to somebody on the other side of the world with the same sort of mentality. Right. You know? Exactly, exactly. Thank you, thank you so much, honestly. You've you've just been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so you guys just uh, DM us, uh, let us know what you think. If you have any questions, send me a DM, send Noel a DM. Uh, we we'll definitely want to hear from you and uh, talk to you guys. Um, just like we keep saying, we're here with you every step of the way to make sure that you have that energy you know, to achieve your goals. Uh, enhanced fitness well-being there says you are a real inspiration. Yeah, well. I'll, I'll be in day, touch. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much, Enhanced Fitness. Thank you. But thank I, I hopefully one day, one day soon. No, definitely, definitely, Noel. Thank you so much. Thank you all, everybody, for your feedback, your comments, for joining us on this session. You guys are awesome. You guys are the best. Let Thank you guys you. enjoy the rest of your weekend. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend, Noel. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk again very, very soon. My um, warm love to your beautiful daughter. Uh, Thank you. De de definitely. Thank you so much for being here with us, Noel. Take care. Uh, bye. Keep up the good work, man, and then I'll chat to you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Take care. <laughs> bye. <All the> <laughs>